<laughs> Whoops. <laughs> read your quote whenever we get started. Venice. Oh, there's Pri is that Priscilla? Yeah. What a beauty. Let me read you a quote here from Priscilla Presley's article in Venice Magazine. Jane is so oblivious to Frank's silliness and stupidity. Do you take offense in being called silly and stupid? I don't know what you would mean by that. Why would I take offense? I don't even understand what she's saying. Only an actress assured of herself as a person could play Jane to Leslie Nielsen's Frank <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, she might be very accurate there, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, and but she used the key word because she has to be oblivious as the character of Jane because the apt description of Frank Drebin is consummate obliviousness. Oblivious. So you have to be oblivious to what Frank is doing. See, we, well, yes, I do as a person, but mm -hmm. Frank is oblivious to everything. And it's interesting. I never thought about it before, but that's true. Jane is oblivious also. Let me tell you, I'm a hard laugh. I mean, I'm like having a bunch of morticians in the audience. I, I'm laughing on the inside, but I'm not a great laugher on the outside. Yeah. I laughed a lot, and I laughed more in this one than I did uh, really since Airplane. Airplane's the last one that really got me rolling on the floor, and it still does. When yeah. I see the guy run by saying Annie M and all that in the control yeah. tower, yeah, yeah, I yeah. still <laughs> laugh, and I've seen it 50 times. Yeah. But uh, this movie really, I think, might even be better than the first one, and that's quite a statement. Well, you see, we secretly believe that, too. We think, as when we were shooting it, we felt it was better than the first two. But, you know, you can feel that, and it's not until it gets out until I hear you say it. But I've seen so many copycat Naked Gun airplane movies lately yeah. in the last three or four years that have been really pretty awful. And it really is amazing that you guys seem to be the only ones who have the formula. Now, even parts of this team go off and do things, and they almost hit home runs, and they do okay, but not quite ever what the airplane and the Naked Gun series can do. I mean, do you know when you're out there, you're hitting a home run? Well. I felt we were hitting a home run, uh, n not knowing as well then as I do now, because when I, you know, the, the talents involved in putting the films together uh, are really superior. They're mm -hmm. tremendous. Uh, you know, David's uh, flair for comedy and his knowledge of comedy is, uh, you know, just one in a million. He's one of the best directors. Mm -hmm. Then to have the luck of finding Pete Siegel and to work with him as a young director who is. Uh, who did a monumental job actually directing by committee because he had a lot of people who were telling him what to do and uh, to have his talent shine through and then on top of it do it with such diplomacy and good nature you know is I, I'm looking forward to hopefully to working with him again. Does laughter uh, ever stop the take? Uh, sometimes but of course you know in movies it, you know it, you can't have laughter while you're doing the shot. Right. The, we're doing it to make the audience laugh not ourselves. But the thing, too, is that, that when you're talking about the, the, the imitations, is, and that's what they are, is they miss the essence of the humor. And that is that in the Naked Gun or Airplane, at no time did the, w was it directed in a way to make sure that the audience uh, knew what was funny. Mm -hmm. You know, the audience's freedom of choice is left alone. The actors behave in a way <coughs> that not for one second are you aware that they may be thinking that they're doing something funny. But all of the other stuff that I see is that you can see, you can hear people and you see people and you can see that they are, n are trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. and the, but what happens is they're simply trying to be silly. And that's what it comes across as, is being silly. Now isn't it amazing how your life has turned since really the airplane things? I mean, it's crazy. I mean, do you find that you're trying to, that people really want you to be Frank Drebin when you go into a room or an interview or in, a, in an airplane lounge or whatever? It, it really makes no difference w what they want because I, <laughs> I know now that the, I am Frank Drebin. <laughs> and it's nice to be able to just say, hey, no, no, I'm just as dumb and stupid as Drebin is. And uh, yeah, we go to bed together. We are one and the same person. Were you Frank Drebin 20 years ago? Sure I was. But the expectations of me were, were not the same. They were, you were they more had, of a leading man. Well, they had expectations yeah. of me, you know, uh, that seemed to go toward perfection. Mm -hmm. You know, I always looked like I knew what I was talking mm -hmm. about. And I always looked like, just standing there, that, uh, that, uh, that I knew what I was doing. And so people expected me to behave in a certain mm -hmm. way. And they didn't give me any leeway for any imperfection. Drebin has saved me. <laughs> I'm free now to be a, <coughs> to be a lunatic and, and to be, uh, you know, kind of insane. I'm free. You know, Drebin has helped to free me as a person. Well, that sounds like some kind of a speech you'd give on the mall in Washington. You, you could do it, yeah. That yeah, Frank it Drebin is true. has freed yeah. you. See, you, and it may, you may be in the long run when we do this kind of thing that that's a, and select an occupation. You know, I think I may have found out one of the reasons I became an actor. <laughs> that's true. Well, nice yeah. seeing you again. Thank funny, you. funny, funny, funny movie. Lord, I'm we delighted. need to laugh, so it's Thank great. You. Thank, Thank you.